Maggie. Hey, Daphne. How are you? I'm good, sweetheart. How are you doing? Oh, nothing much. I have been a little busy now that Christmas is near. There is so much work at home and I can't even ask anyone for help because both Jared and Kelly are busy with their work. Why are they still busy? Shouldn't they be getting breaks for the festive season? Well, you know the father-daughter duo. They are so diligent to finish up the practice sessions that they just refuse to take a break. Kelly is currently learning fencing and her father is devoting most of his free time to her teaching all sorts of new techniques. Goodness, I don't even know if I fit between them. <laughs> Oh, sweetie, it's fine. I'm glad that Jared is so devoted to teaching Kelly the art of fencing. It's a rare sport, but if one masters it, they are known for ages in this field. So, I have heard from them. I'm happy that Jared is giving so much of his time to his daughter. Kelly's lucky to have him. Just make sure that Jared doesn't push her too much. He has always had this habit of going overboard which doesn't end up well. Kelly is just 15 and she has plenty of time left to diligently practice fencing. I know, we already had a conversation together but I don't think Jared gave much thought to my words. Oh, that punk. I'm gonna teach him a lesson for that. How dare he ignore you? It's fine. <laughs> I'm used to this. And even though I'm saying he pays no attention to my words, I know he still gives them plenty of thoughts. Jared is a good man. And he's an amazing father to our daughter. We love him so much. Where I grew up, I remember my father being mostly absent and stoic towards me. I never got the chance to build up a good relationship with him. And by the time I was thinking of opening up to him, he was taken away from me. But I'm glad that Kelly doesn't have to go through such painful events. She has a supportive father who is willing to give all his time to her with no complaints whatsoever. He is a lucky man that he has someone like you in his life. All these years raising him, all I had ever thought was if my stoic son would ever find love in someone. And you opened his heart and here is now with his own beautiful wife and daughter supporting his lovely family. You give me too much credit, Daphne. I'm not that special. I'm just a country girl who stumbled upon your amazing son. Oh, please, don't gush over that boy. I've told you so many times, he can be an asshole too. I can't help it though, I love him so much. I'm really happy for you too. By the way, did Kelly tell you about this boy in her class, Harold, if I remember correctly? Yes, the two have been friends since middle school, why? Oh my gosh, don't tell me they are dating. Oh god, you didn't know? Please, don't tell Kelly that I told you this. She asked me to keep it a secret. I won't, I promise. But I just knew something was going on between those two. They have always been so close and Harold has been helping her with her classes ever since she got busier with fencing. He has even come to our house a few times and that boy is the sweetest. But he's a little scared of Jared. <laughs> no father wants his daughter to get wooed by an unknown man. And now that a competitor has stepped up, I'm sure Jared is gonna be more on guard. That's what you call a father's instinct. I still remember when Jared's sister brought her first boyfriend into the house. My husband was throwing sharp eye daggers at him with his deathly stares. The boy almost wet his pants and never showed up at our house. Oh yes, I've heard of this story from Jared. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> That's one of my core memories from their childhood. And my kids are all grown up and happy with their families. It's a bittersweet feeling, but I'm so happy for all of you. And yes, I'm expecting you to visit here on Christmas Eve. Don't you dare cancel your plans. I want you guys to try my amazing apple pie this year. I have finally mastered it. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to try it. Don't worry, I'm dragging these two hot-blooded fencers with me to your house. 
<laughs> I'm counting on you, Maggie. See you next week. See you. When Kelly and Jared came back from practice, I told them about my little conversation with Daphne. We had dinner together and it was the end of another pleasant day with my family. Though I never raised the topic about Kelly's me boyfriend in front of Jared and once Kelly was off to sleep, I decided to have a small mother-daughter chat with her. I asked her about Harold very nonchalantly and with flushed cheeks and she told me that she likes him. I couldn't contain my smile as I brought her into a tight hug. My daughter in all these years has never really enjoyed life as a kid. She has always been devoted to her studies and fencing and while none of them has ever forced her into these things, she wants to make her father proud. I know how important it is for both of them. They share a dream and they have been working hard toward it. But then again, finding love in this world isn't easy either. And now that I've heard she's dating Harold, I wish all the best for their blossoming relationship. However, when I was about to leave the room, Kelly asked me to not tell Jared about it, almost timidly, which I have never seen before. She told me that he didn't like the idea of her dating at such a young age and that it will be a distinction for her. Jared even thinks that Harold is not a good boy and Kelly is scared that if their relationship is revealed to him, he will never forgive her. To give her a sense of reassurance, I promised her that I'd not let the word out unless she is ready to tell Jared about it. But before the Christmas party at Daphne's place, Jared called them red-handed going out on a date. Maggie, did you know Kelly's going out with that scrawny boy from her class? Huh? You mean Harold? Why? They are just friends. Oh, do you take me for a fool? I saw them today coming out of the movies. What the hell, Maggie? I thought you knew how serious I am about our daughter's future, but here you are trying to play the matchmaker for her. She's a grown-up kid now, Jared. What the hell is wrong with you, huh? And why are you talking to me like this? You need to be a bit more gentle with your daughter. She's scared of you. What do you mean scared? All I want for her is to be disciplined and focus on the art that she has devoted herself to. These boys are nothing but scrumbags who are going to distract her from her dreams. But of course, how would you understand that? You are so naive and stupid that you'd rather see your daughter get her heart broken by some jerk rather than prepare her for a better future. What the hell is wrong with you, Jared? You are the one who is forcing his dreams on her. Do you have any idea how suffocating it must have gotten for her? She's giving her best to make you proud, but what the hell are you doing as his father? You are not even letting her enjoy the little things in life. She's just 15 and you are already making her your slave. Do you have any idea how the world works, Maggie? All you do is stay at home and watch stupid reality shows and rom-com and you think life will turn out just fine for Kelly, huh? Just because she now has a boyfriend? You know nothing. You are just an ignorant woman who acts like she knows all. That boy can be a creepy stalker. Have you ever thought of that possibility? What if he is just using our Kelly? I'm going to have to talk to her. And don't you dare give your two cents in between. I'm so angry at you right now, Maggie. You really disappointed me. I couldn't stop crying after that conversation. When Jared and Kelly were having the mad conversation, I stayed silent and focused on my work in the kitchen. I was feeling humiliated, but I didn't know how else to answer. Jared was angry, extremely angry, and he asked Kelly to never cross that line again. He gave her a stern warning, and with theory eyes, Kelly accepted that. I couldn't do anything for my daughter. I was helpless. The next day, Jared went to talk to Harold and told him to stay away from Kelly. Honestly, the man that me and my daughter loved the most was suddenly looking like a psychopath to us. But we knew there was nothing we could do. Everything went back to normal in just two days. Jared apologized to us and we went to celebrate Christmas at Daphne's place. I'm sure she noticed something was off, but chose to stay silent. We talked over the phone once we got back, but I didn't say much to her and just told her that Kelly is better off focusing on fencing rather than a relationship. Our family was back to being the same happy family again, but deep down, both me and Kelly were suffocating while Jared had his leash around us. Two weeks later... Hey, sweetie, how is your practice going? It's going fine, mom. How are you? I'm doing great, baby. Just preparing for dinner. 
When is that coming back home? Tomorrow morning, why? Oh, nothing, just asking, that's all. Do you still talk to Harold? I want to, but he doesn't. He doesn't want me to get scolded or distracted because of him. I should go and apologize to him. What your father did was wrong. Don't. He will yell at you. I can handle that. Don't worry about it. No, mom. You have already heard enough on my behalf. I can never forgive myself if he says another bad thing about you. He is right. I should have kept my focus on fencing. If I didn't go out with Harold that day, he wouldn't have said those things to you. How do you know he said something bad to me? I saw your chat the day he caught me. Kelly, it's okay. But I never thanked you. I was too scared to open my mouth in the house. I was too scared to talk to my mother and say thank you to her for standing up for me. It's fine, sweetie. Please don't apologize. You're already stressed enough. The competition is right around the corner. I don't care anymore. I'm scared, mom. I think a dad is a bad man. I don't love him anymore. He seems like a completely different man. I used to think that he loves me, but now that I recall certain things, I feel disgusted. I feel like he has been obsessed with me and wants me to have him all for himself. And that's why he doesn't want me to date anyone. What do you mean, Kelly? What are you saying? The way he sometimes touches me? I don't know, mom. I don't know who I should talk to about these things. I'm scared and so confused. I feel like my brain has gotten crazy and it's making me think things that are not even real. It makes me think of my father as a nasty predator who tried to make a move on me. I don't know, mom. I'm so confused. I'm so sorry for saying these things. I don't understand anymore what's going on with me. Kelly, calm down. If you're having a panic attack, take deep breaths. Kelly, answer me. Are you okay? In a hurry, I called Kelly only to hear Harold's voice from the other side. He tells me that Kelly is having a breakdown, but he will make sure to drop her at home in some time. I felt relieved and thanked him. I also apologized to him for what happened, but the boy politely asked me to not say such things and assured me that he holds no grudge against us. As I hung up, I saw a message coming from Jared. I hope everything is good at home. Are you guys okay? Yes, everything is fine. Where is Kelly? Is she back? She's on her way. I hope she's not seeing that guy again. She isn't. You should stop worrying about that. You closed that chapter yourself. I did. And I know I never said this to you properly, but I'm sorry for what I said to you. You've already apologized. It's okay. I don't think you have forgiven me, though. And I won't blame you if you say yes to me. I said some really horrible things to you. Forget about me. You should think about Kelly first. You've hurt her deeply. She has always loved you. But what you did was wrong, Jared. She is my everything, Maggie. My hope, my dream. You both are my world. I promise I will make it up to you guys. Did you do something to Maggie? Huh? What do you mean? Never mind. Is everything okay? Yeah, just come back home tomorrow safely. I will. And let's plan a trip together. We can go trekking or maybe even on a beach. What do you think? That sounds fun. I'll ask Kelly tomorrow. I think we should have another proper father-daughter quality time. Maybe that will work. See you. Love you, honey. Love you too. I was feeling disgusted. I don't know why. The love of my life, the father of my daughter, I was starting to find him repulsive. In all these 16 years of our marriage, I had never thought I'd feel this way for him. But what scared me more was the words that Kelly told me. The father-daughter quality time they spent together. Was something genius going on in my absence? What did Kelly mean by Jared making a move on his own daughter? All these questions flooded my head, but I had no answer. When Harold dropped Kelly at home, I asked him to come inside as a sign of gratitude. But the boy refused, saying if someone saw him, then they might inform my husband. He was scared as well. It was clear in his eyes. 
Kelly had already gotten back to her room and I decided to talk to her a little. But it seemed like she was tired to say anything to me. She was all curled up in her bed and when I approached her, she simply asked me to leave her alone. She wanted space and I completely understood that. I asked if she'd be taking a shower and she said yes before letting me know that the light in her bathroom had fused and if I could change it for her. I agreed and with a pat on her head, I went there to change it. But what I saw there in the socket left me trembling. There was a small camera fit inside. A secret working camera that gave a full view of my daughter's body while she showered every day. I knew who did this. It was Jared. He was the only one renovating Kelly's bathroom four months ago. Immediately, I took a video of that before checking other corners of the bathroom. There was another one in the mirror. I was shocked. My husband was a nasty predator who was secretly lusting over his daughter. In a minute I was out as I asked Kelly to pack her important things. She seemed confused, but I reassured her that I'd tell her everything on the way. She complied and by the next 30 minutes we were driving out of that cursed house. I showed her the video and that's when I saw my lovely daughter break down. She was not crazy. Her father was harassing her. But as a mother, it was my time to step up and protect her. Right now, I'm on my way to the police. But I know that would not be enough punishment for that bastard. I have already made this video go viral on TikTok. The world also needs to know what kind of a man my husband is and that such crimes can happen even at your own home.